Welcome back. I went through all 32 NFL teams to figure exactly how the NFL coaches affect your fantasy football team. Today's episode, the Miami Dolphins. So, take a seat. Class is in session. So to get started, has there been any coaching changes whatsoever here? Yes, there has been on the defensive side of the ball in which they got Vic Fangio. His specialty is linebackers and defensive backs. This team still has more of an offensive mind to it with Mike McDaniels and Frank Smith. Mike McDaniels' specialty is the run game, which is emphasized with his time with the Redskins, the Browns, the 49ers, and now the Dolphins. But in his time with the Browns and the Redskins, he did have some specialty with the wide receivers. Frank Smith, on the other hand, specializes in offensive lines and tight ends. This is seen with his time with the Saints, the Bears, the Raiders, the Chargers, and now the Dolphins. And I think the general kind of thesis that we can understand here is that they're going to create a more offensive mind around the run game. Because you got one guy specializing in basically blocking schemes and the other who likes to run well. And we've seen the overall creativity that's come from Mike McDaniels. And the only concern that I really have about this team in the offseason is that they got rid of both of their starting tackles. Now, you can tell me in the comments whether they're actually good or bad, or I made a misjudgment here, but this is how many people have theoretically started over seven games. They didn't address it in the draft, and they sort of addressed it in free agency. With an offensive line coach, you could theoretically err on the side of optimism, but considering the center is still holding out for more money, I'm a little bit pessimistic. That also going to completely change by the time this video gets published, but I like to shoot these all in kind of one go. Now that we've laid the foundation for exactly how the Dolphins have attacked this offseason, we can start to identify exactly how the coaches affect our overall fantasy teams. But before we do that, we need to check with the guys upstairs to see exactly how they have the Miami Dolphins projected to go about this season so we can give our knowledge a little bit more structure. I mean, if anything, the Miami Dolphins should be absolutely elite this season. They're projected to go somewhere between 9 and 10 wins, but it's kind of hard to believe they're going to perform well because of the overall difficulty that is their schedule. I'm not going to go against consensus here and having the Miami Dolphins going out of third in their specific division either. It's a very difficult thing and something I'm going to kind of harp on more when we get to Tua is I have some concerns that are outside of the injury. But now that we've got a really strong understanding of the general direction in which the Miami Dolphins are headed this season, we can actually dive into exactly how Mike McDaniels and Frank Smith affect our overall fantasy teams. So starting off with the quarterback, and that is Tua. Now, could Tua be the quarterback one this season? A hundred percent. I truly believe that. But my primary line of concern lies in the last three games of the season that he played. Now, you can say that was head injury related. You can say this or that. But when your offensive line is also in a bit of a rebuild itself, that's not the safest structure for someone like Tua, especially with the guys that are kind of focused more on the overall run game from what I'm seeing from a coaching perspective. And I could easily be wrong in that. They could have signed Dalvin Cook by now. They could have done a lot of things. But let's look up the averages based off the charts here. Tua easily could be averaging 20 fantasy points plus per game. That's 100% a possibility. But I'm going to put him more in that 17 to 18 fantasy point range. And that's something that could easily bite me. In which I'm going to honestly err a little bit more on the optimistic side and go with like 18 to 19. But the reason I wanted to draw attention to those last three games was because something I noticed in the overall accuracy more than anything. And I think defensive coordinators are going to particularly harp on this throughout this season. Now, could Mike McDaniels completely play around this? 100%. I mean, we saw the creativity from him last year, but I don't think Lightning's going to strike twice in that sense. So what you're going to notice in the first half of the season is that Tua was basically throwing over 70 plus percent like completion percentage, which is amazing. But what we're also going to see in the last three games of the season is that he was basically at 60% on a maximum and his fantasy production was absolutely abysmal. I don't think Buffalo's defense really had enough time to catch on exactly to what the Chargers did in week 15, but I think the Packers did. And basically what I learned, at least that's what I think I learned, is that this offense is entirely based off of rhythm. And the reason I believe that Tua started throwing so many interceptions in that last game was because the Packers were like, all right, all we have to do is really just consistently bump, 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 and the ball will basically fly right to us or it'll throw over their heads or whatever it is. Because Tua is a very big rhythm quarterback from my understanding, meaning that it's all about timing and placement. And if you mess up the overall timing of the route itself, and he's planning to throw it at a specific time, it's not going to work. Now, is this probably an over-egregious take on someone like Tua? More than likely, yes. But I think he's actually relying a lot on the overall offensive scheme to really get those players open more than anything. And he just knows that they're going to be there so he can time it perfectly. But considering he's also not the most mobile quarterback, I think that's something to kind of keep an eye on. And I also think that the overall placement of which his receivers are going compared to him is very intriguing as well. Why wouldn't he theoretically be going higher because of the correlation rates? You know what I mean? I understand that we want more rush heavy kind of quarterbacks going earlier in those rounds. But I guess the main point I'm trying to make here is that it looks like defensive coordinators actually figure out exactly how this offense works towards the end of last season. And if I'm a Dolphins fan, I'm a little bit concerned here. 
And who knows, maybe that helmet cam will have a real drawback for them as well. But Tua has been practicing his jiu-jitsu so he can learn how to properly fall well. So that is a nice thing to see. So I really hope that his health can stay in good structure because I am a little bit worried about that as well. But that's not my primary cause for concern for this Miami Dolphins team. Really relies on the overall strength of schedule and the potential emphasis on the run game and potentially having their actual offense figured out a little bit. Like defensive coordinators aren't just sitting there they're like, okay, well, we're just going to focus on our defense, blah, blah, blah. Like their job is to analyze all the film from last year and figure out, okay, these are exactly what was happening. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And with the strength of schedule they have, it's not going to be easy. Rant aside and moving on to the RB1, and that should be theoretically Raheem Mostert potentially. It's hard because of the age in the gap kind of here and the potential to be signing someone in free agency. So this could easily change by the time this video comes out. But I'm expecting the run game to kind of get implemented a bit more this year, which will also kind of deter to his overall production potentially. I genuinely think we could be expecting like a 15 fantasy point floor from whoever the RB1 is in Miami this year. But I'm going to reduce that expectation of really somewhere between 13 to 14 fantasy points per game because I think that's a bit more logical. Not going to have too, too much to say about it just because we don't really know who's going to be the true RB1 in this offense, whether they're going to sign someone new or who knows, maybe it'll be Devin on chain. I've heard they've potentially been putting him in a little bit of wide receiver roles, and he's just fast. <laughs> and what does Mike McDaniels love the most? Speed! And the only kind of hindrance that we have here is the potential BMI issue, but we'll see how that all plays out. we we'll go to RB2, and that theoretically is Jeff Wilson Jr. at this time. Same thought process, but we can see an overall downtrend here. I think an 8 fantasy point per game projection is safe here, considering that we're garnering a potential uptick in the overall usage of the run game. Moving over to the wide receiver one, and at this point in time, it is Tyreek Hill. Now, this has most certainly been on an uptrend, and a 20 fantasy point per game floor is definitely safe to some extent, but I think going somewhere like 18 makes a lot more sense. The ADP wide receiver thing just doesn't really make a lot of sense with me with how far back Tua is. Like, that has a correlation in effect, and if Tua theoretically isn't going to be performing to the level or injured or whatever it is, that's going to have a significant drop back on their overall production. And I also wouldn't be surprised if Jalen Waddle ends up turning out to be the true wide receiver one in this offense by the time the year is done. But I also believe there is a decent chance that we could see someone in kind of like a Debo Samuel type of role this year. Do I think what's going on with the boat's going to have any effect? No. But moving over to the wide receiver two, Jalen Waddle. I do think there's a realm of possibility that Jalen Waddle could fit this Debo Samuel type of role though. But considering the amazing uptake that we're seeing in the wide receiver two position, I am expecting a tiny bit of a drop back as well rather than a continued ascension into that about 14 to 15 fantasy points per game. That's really not too much of a drawback. It's a very tiny drawback. As I said, I just have my overall concerns with this offense at the theoretical level of production that they should be able to produce. Moving over to the wide receiver three, and that should be Cedric Wilson Jr. Wide receiver really receives no love in this offense, and you can kind of see that in the charts here. I think a seven fantasy point per game average is a very safe estimate. Move over to the tight end one, and that is Durham Smythe in theory. I mean, we've definitely seen some absolutely elite usages out of the tight ends under these guys' regimes. But considering they both appear to be in a downtrend, I think a seven fantasy point per game average makes a lot more sense here. I think they're really going to emphasize more on the run blocking side of things rather than really getting the tight end involved in the passing game. So to kind of recap this, I'm just worried that defensive coordinators have essentially figured out the Miami Dolphins. I think their schedule is very difficult. And I'm just not convinced that this offensive line is going to be amazing. I think we're going to see a higher level of emphasis on the overall run game. And I think there's a decent chance that we could see Jalen Waddle potentially in that Debo Samuel type of role. This offense still should be entirely revolved around speed. There's still a lot of optimistic things for it. But I'm personally not going to be buying a lot of equity in Miami this year, and I could be very wrong for that. You've heard me rant on this a little bit now. Go ahead and drop your questions down in the comment section. If you like this series or particularly find it interesting, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. we got a video coming on the Minnesota Vikings tomorrow. As always, peace.